hate you so much. <laughs> why are you giving me, Why are you giving me shit about my my uh, extracurricular activities? Yeah, and my my male chauvinistic <laughs> attitude <laughs> off air, so nobody hears it. Oh God, it's safe with it, me. I saved that file. <laughs> No, I didn't. I deleted it. Delete, 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 delete. What's up, boys and girls? Ooh, we're back. Episode five. Five. Um, five time. Five, five time. time. Five time. Five time podcast. We're coming for you, podcast. Podcast world. <laughs> five, episode five of the backstage, boys. Yo, buddy. With Basil and Trent. How's it going? Dude, yeah. I don't think I fully recovered. Today is, uh, it's. Is oh, today today's Thursday? Thursday, the Thursday following All In Weekend. That's pretty nuts. Yeah, I, uh, you. How much weight did you lose running around? <laughs> I'm mean, serious. I, I have no idea because I ate like shit. Yeah, then you like canceled it out. So you canceled out the bad food. It did, but I was doing so much running around, especially at Warrior Wrestling. I had all my friends in town. I so, mean, I don't think it helped that I took Brian Cage to Nando's and Stan's Donuts be- like within yeah. a half an hour of each other. So Cage, who doesn't gain weight, only muscle. Only muscle. Was fine eating all Did that you, shit. Dude, he posted a video today where he's like, yeah, sometimes I go too hard at the gym. And when your earbuds fall off, he can't use the same arm that his earbud is at. He has to use his other arm because oh his bicep God. is blocking his arm he, from reaching his neck. Jesus Christ. <laughs> he was looking extra swole on, uh, at Warrior Wrestling. Well... He was looking extra swole weekend because he's doing like three, four hour workouts before he does a show. Steve at Warrior said he did a four hour workout. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Four hours. Like he said he got to the building early, did a four hour workout, and then came back to like settle in. I was like, what the hell? He's a machine. That's how you look like Brian Cage. You That's have to work out for four hours. I'm just going to buy the, the effing machine. Uh, tank top, and I hope that works. Maybe that, yeah. Maybe that's all it is. It's that's all. all that's all it is. Uh, all I'm a tank. He, al- he almost took a Lou Malnati's pizza home. A full Lou Malnati's pizza. Which I ended up taking home. Yeah. And I've been eating. You're which still? Are you still eating it? I still got a couple slices. Oh, dude, it's been like four days. Pizza doesn't go bad. You keep it refrigerated. Bruh, that's, right. ki- that's kind of gross. I got like one more day. I have, I have like a. I have like a two day limit. On pizza. On pizza. You just put it in the oven. It kills whatever germs is on there. <laughs> There's no bacteria on this. I know, but it's not like, did you seal it up and all that? Or is it still yeah, in the box? No, it's, it, it's probably done. I'm pretty domesticated when it comes to these things. I don't know about that part. It's, it's, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. So. Uh, episode five. Let's... Okay, we already, they already know what episode it is. All right, just all right. reiterating. Um, we had, well, yeah, technically, I mean, Trent was there with me almost for everything. Um, it was four shows, back to back to back to back. That's four backs. Four backs. Um, so we had Destination Chicago, Thursday night. Then we had Defining Moment, the following night. Both AEW. Both for AEW. And, uh, then Saturday, I was at All Out doing photography. And then Trent met me up for All In. In the Too Sweet. Too Sweet. Too Sweet. Too Sweet. Too sweet. I thought it's one sweet now. No, it was always too sweet. No, but I thought they had to go one sweet because of the lawsuit or cease and desist. No, but we spell it differently. Oh yeah, because it's actually a sweet. We were sitting. It's in. a sweet. So, but yeah, we were in the too sweet, and then Sunday was Warrior Wrestling. My uh, first Warrior Wrestling, your second. Yeah, my second. That was their second show. So we got some. Uh, this extra show. This episode is extra thick. I hope. I, I mean, we said that last time. I think this one's actually gonna be thick. This is thicker than thick. We don't know yet. We'll see. I mean, okay, we're we're not. Gonna There's a lot of shows. We I don't think we've ever talked about this Four. many shows. We're not gonna break down every match. Obviously, we're not. Yeah, that, because that'd be boring. We're, we're gonna break down um, highlights. the highlights of and the each fun of the show and the fun lights. Yeah, is that a word? Fun lights. Yeah. Can we coin that? I guess. Hashtag fun lights. Hashtag fun lights. All right. Let's do that. Cause Hashtag like, AAW fun lights. Because <laughs> cause, uh, like two heels in a face has all sorts of hashtags. They're all like hashtag push Paco. Hashtag what? Beat GPA. All sorts of weird shit. So like we can do we can do stuff like that. Why not? Yeah. So yeah. All right. <laughs> Hashtag fun lights. Hashtag fun lights. Because we're fun. Oh, that's right. So anyway. Um, all right. So we uh, let's kick it off. Thursday. I took off work early. 
to... I took off work that entire... That's right. I took off work from Wednesday all the way through Monday for this. So I... Yeah, we got to Logan. Everything was pretty much almost set when I got there. There was a little... I had to run out and, and uh, finish doing chairs because uh, chair numbering was, was left. So Mike had to leave early uh, due to some, some commitment. But I, I finished it off. I, I got everybody's asses in those seats. You did. I, I drew... I drew the asses in this. Ass, ass, ass to seat. Ass to seat. Butts to nuts. Or nuts to butts. So, um, we had both nights sell out, which was absolutely awesome. I'm talking like fire code capacity sell out. Yeah. These were ridiculous. We were turning away people at the door. Like literally. So, uh, we had a few extra that we had at the door, but... We, we, we had, had to turn away after a certain amount. Oh yeah, yeah. After after a while, we're like we're we're against fire codes here. Yeah, and uh, not only did we sell out, but it was our first show that we streamed live, and we streamed live on HighSpots.com. That was cool. The HighSpots dude was cool. That was he was really chill. Like I talked to him before. Yeah, he was nice. Um, so I knew him, and I had to work with getting the video promos. Yeah, and. Was he co- was he cool? Like was he quick about that turnaround with the video pro? He was cool with it. Um, me and him talked about formatting and what frame rates and all that stuff, all that technical uh, garbage. It makes it so much easier when you have a production guy who's willing to work with you. Yeah, we've we've seen production people who are like difficult. Yeah, you know, who like are so set in their own way, who like don't want to change anything. Like I mean, you, like in this business, you have to work on the fly a yeah. lot. Like you have to improv. You gotta be able. To, you gotta be adaptable. You have to like take a lot of BS, like day of, minute of. Yeah. And I'm like, we're streaming live. Like, dude, you need somebody who's like, all right. Let me but work with I you. was, yeah, I was more flexible, obviously, because it's a live stream. Yeah. And I didn't want anything to go wrong, so I made sure everything was was proper. You got me promos really early too. Like you got, I had everything lined oh, up. Oh, I was, I was, uh, I was like, yo, we need to get promos done. At this time, because I need to do photography, and I, I was need to like, do ringside. Yeah, and you had me like lined up. I had like seven, I think, total. Yeah, for I was social like, media. I was like screaming for you over the balcony. Yeah, that's pretty... I was like, Trent, get your get ass up, up here, here right now. I gotta give you promos immediately. I'm like, all right, drop them. Yeah. So. So we yeah. So like on the promo tip, really quick. Um. So we set we film two sets of promos. We do promos for the live show, or AK, like also the DVD, depending on what it is. But then we have exclusive promos that are just for social media, and uh, which I handle getting out, which Basil takes care of, uh, which we sometimes produce together. Hopefully, doing more of that. Mm. But, uh, but uh, so it was cool. Like I had all seven ready, and it was like released throughout the night. And dude, I, they they went over so well. I had them blasting all over like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Like they were all over the place. The only downfall about Logan. Um, is that we don't have a video screen. That is not And I, 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 I hate it because I want a video screen at Logan. So the people, because what ended up happening, and I'll say this was the downfall about doing a live stream at Logan. Mm-hmm. We had to film the promos on the live stream, mm-hmm. but it was quiet in the arena. Yeah. In the building, not the arena, the building. We'll call it Perception's okay. reality. Perception's reality. The arena. But we had to, we had like, uh, like luckily I kept all the promos from about one to two minutes, mm-hmm. but that one to two minutes made a difference for Big the crowd. So like it, it was kind of good because it would cool down the crowd a little bit. Yeah. But you don't want the crowd to cool down. True. So. But the thing was, uh, I was trying to think like, what, what could we do in that building as an alternative? Like, you know, could we... Well, well, we have the AEW sign above the entrance is where we should have... Well, like, like we had that sign there. We had a banner. Why couldn't we do a screen? Like, I, f- I feel like a screen would have fit. It would have fit perfectly. So, I don't know. I'm not sure what the what all the details are. I was thinking also, I'm like, what if we did a stand-up projector? Like, but like what put it up put against it? the... But no walls are flat. Yeah, no walls are flat. Like, there's really no options in that building. You'd have no. to hang it. Yeah, but that's a pain in the butt. Bringing it down, bringing it back up. I'm shocked that building doesn't have one. Like, why don't you guys just have a Because projector? it's a it's a, it's a a dance hall. I know, but like, I mean, have options, right? Like, a projector could come in handy. Yeah, no, but it's Logan. It's Logan Square. I mean, yes. it's a hipster. It's a hipster environment. True. Well, they, don't, I don't they don't want that newfangled 
age tech. Newfangled age tech. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, to start off the night, we had, uh, we had, uh, the tag team championship match. That was cool. Uh, finally wrestling. What a story arc this was. Like, the whole build of wrestling. Uh, you're also wearing a wrestling hat right now. I am wearing my wrestling hat. Shout out to David Starr. That merch is pretty cool. I love the... Re- Dude, wrestling... The wrestling gear is our NWO, our Bullet Club type merch. So they don't do wrestling anywhere else? Just no, for us? No, wrestling is strictly AEW and only AEW. I think that's pretty badass. Yeah. I, I remember you told me that like a month ago. I was like, really? I thought they were milking this everywhere. No. It's but it's the only mm, promotion where they're all together, right? It's the only promotion where they're, they're all together because David... David does a lot of international stuff. Yeah. Um, Eddie is Eddie everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then Trevor Lee, he does a lot of East Coast or PWG stuff. It would be. And then Jeff Cobb is just everywhere, and especially now that he's doing dates with ROH. It'd be cool if they could bring that around. Like, No, I no? like it that it's ours. Yeah? I really do, because... Like, like I'd pop if I saw Eddie or... Or, like, Trevor wearing a wrestling shirt on Impact. Yeah, I would too, but, like, wrestling is, like... Yeah, I like that it's exclusive, It's though. our thing. Like, yeah. if you want to see wrestling, if you want to see this group, yeah. you have to come to AEW. I like that, Because there's yeah. so much, in, especially in, especially with everything streaming right now... Everything's there's exposed. There's so much that you can't do, because, honestly, indie wrestling, before there was all this streaming, people wouldn't notice... You would bring the same match, True. the same act, the same promos to all these different places. Yeah. But you didn't know that that like you heard about the match. Right, right, right. So you wanted to see you wanted to go to the show to see that match. Right. And that's I like that. Kind of get it get it gets some important to that in of that but show. The, like matches is fine. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Um, because not everybody has to stream, but promos are the things that people need to change up. Yeah. Because everything is being streamed. Or everything is on some sort of streaming on-demand service of some sort. Yeah. So it does get tiring hearing the same exact promos. Um, that's that's like the only thing. Matches is not that big of a deal because some people, like seeing a match live is important. True, yeah. But... Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's just like the biggest thing of how it changed. And I like that wrestling is only for AAW. So if you want to see wrestling as a unit together, you have to come to an AAW That's pretty show. cool. I, I think that's fun. I, that gives it, it gives some individuality to AAW yeah. in that regard. Like, oh, well, shit, I like that merch. I like that group. Yeah, I gotta go see them there. I can only get that shirt there or whatever, you know? Yeah. That's so, cool. Yeah, that, that's why I like that. So, um, and then Scarlet. <laughs> Scarlet Bordeaux. 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 The smoke show? The smoke show hits the goddamn doomsday device. In heels. In heels on David Starr. It was ridiculous. It was like her heels are digging into the turnbuckle. That's that's impressive, man. In heels. Like, and these were not like one inch heels. Like these were like platform heels. Stiletto type. Oh stiletto yeah. Like I don't know, they're the really sharp heels. Is yeah. that what they call Stilettos. them? Stilettos? Yeah. Yeah. Like those motherfuckers would hurt if you got if you got hit with them. She uh she's incredible. <laughs> she's Dude, nuts. she's so like she's improved so well. It's nuts. It's crazy. I think T V also gave her that extra level of polish and confidence lately. Which is nice because she's like she's just so good out there. But do you know what's the best part? She's such a sweetheart. That's the best part. She has no ego. None. Like zero ego whatsoever. She's, like when she comes in the building, she's excited to see the workers. She's excited to talk to you. She's excited to interact. She's not in a corner by herself being quiet. And I've seen some girls do that when they're like ignore everybody, and I'm like, dude. I mean, she comes in. And, I think I think some girls are jealous of that because like they don't have that and but they don't. Make... I consider girls one of the boys, like right. in that in that sense. You know what I mean? Not an actual boy, but like you get so much shit for that. Right I now. know, whatever. You know what the, I mean? But gender, like, I don't, I don't, the... <laughs> I don't view the women wrestlers any as any different as the yeah. male wrestlers. The only thing is. 
they should have their own separate area to change just for privacy and sure. being polite and all that stuff. But interacting and all that stuff, they should. Everybody should just be one. I agree. In my, in my opinion. But some girls come in and they they're not cool. I've seen that. Oh yeah. But I've she's she's great. She comes in. She says hi to everybody. Yes. Every single person. Like, which is which is fantastic. Yeah, and it, and like I said, no ego. None. So no, I, I, that's awesome. Yeah, she hit that. The like, opposite of Ethan Page. No ego. No ego. <laughs> no ego, Scarlet. Scarlet Burdue. Uh You have a great photo of that Doomsday device. Which I have is... four. I took I took a sequence. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of them was posted on the AW Instagram at AW Pro. Follow, Ten. like, follow, like, follow, repost. like, Basil. He's tagged in those. Get him. But yeah, that's a badass picture. Give me more followers. That's that's I'm um, I'm uh. Are your follower counts just flying right now? No. No. <laughs> I get like I get like an extra follower every post. Do you? Pretty much. One? I get like one follower post. Do people not click on on like tags? No, like? like when I post, yeah. I mainly get I I actually get more followers from my post. Yeah, like on the AEW post. Than the AEW posts. Really? No, but I get what I do. What I do notice is that my likes go up on my stuff. Yeah. When AEW posts something. Right. So well, yeah, the reach I might good. get a I might get a couple follows from it. Like I'm not saying I haven't gotten any. No. But usually when somebody clicks on a page, they'll see the picture. They're not going to see who was tagged. They just like the picture and then they'll follow the page. Yeah. Um. Because they, they see the content. Mm -hmm. So you get more followers from your actual page than if you do if you were tagged. Yeah. You do, get, you do get some from your tag, but it's just instinct to look at the page, see all the all the likes, or see all the pictures, go through the ones that you like, and then just follow the page because you like the content. Yeah, good point. Well, that's good. Um, today, for example, I Blitzkrieg with your photos. Jesus. Dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> my, I'm surprised my phone didn't explode today. Wait, wait so we have okay. I, I want to write it down because I don't. And just so you guys know, I don't post my own photos. Yeah, I post them. Okay, he's my favorite photographer. <laughs> so I okay. So I posted. There were three AW photos on the AW Insta and Twitter. Then there was a Hemi photo posted today. Then there was a there was a Hemi photo posted in the story, which was tagging you as well. And then the AW and the AW story, story, I tagged you. And then, <laughs> so there was like, I was like doing all this throughout the day, like it pasted out. And I'm like, this guy's phone must be just lighting up because you keep all your notifications on like a mark. And I was like, well, just so you know, like <laughs> my, my following used to be manageable. <laughs> so I was like, but like, I was waiting for the text from you to be like, to be like, yo, how much you shit are you going to tag me? In I'm, today? Just, I'm just so numb to it. But Tur like... <laughs> This is all the stuff from today. We're scrolling through the tags. It's all... This is just today. That's amazing. So... And then you posted your own. And then... Yeah. And uh, then... By yeah. the way, you've fallen off your 365 challenge. Um, you going to make know. up for that? Yeah. I'm going to start back up on it, I think, tomorrow. Just but like, because... Are you going to catch up? Like, do you have photos from all those other days? No. Just... Nothing? No. You want to just lie and say you have? No. All right. Well, then you failed the 365 challenge. I did, but I'm just going to start back up on it. Like, from zero... From one? No. What the hell? You can't do Whatever. that. Start Dude, from one. It's not like I wasn't doing photos. Yeah, but you're going to... Look. I was doing wrestling stuff, and the thing is, I don't want to put wrestling stuff on there. Consistency is key. I know. Well, I was consistent with uh, doing the stuff I got paid for. That's true. But... <laughs> you got to think about... It. got to look out for number one. I know, but I was like... I was thinking about it, and I was just drained... Like, we're, we're like it's not hard to post a photo. It's it's hard to <laughs> when you're when you're taking twenty five hundred photos a night. Yeah, you took a lot of pictures. Seven thousand total. Was, yeah, it was seven thousand was the final count. That's a lot of pictures. I don't do seven thousand of anything except dollars. That's a lie. <laughs> like man, we make big money working in indie wrestling. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Shit, my PayPal was exploding. Oof, big time. Oh man! I mean, listen. I, I'm sure I made. I'm sure I made more than some some workers. <laughs> uh, hot dog I, and a handshake. Yeah, I no, I got two hot. No, I actually got more than a hot dog. No, we got two hot dogs. This I got weekend. I got two hot dogs, pizza, I, I and was, hamburgers. I was, I was looking when uh, when I got when I got sent my pay. I go, oh crap! I got a rate. Oh no, I worked two days. Yeah, that's why I I I'm like I'm like yeah, I made some. Oh, wait, uh, that's two dude, days. Literally because we got paid at all in. 
Yeah, we did. My... Our, 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 our payment notifications. Was that all in? Was while well, we were at all in. And I was like, shit. And I look at my Apple Watch and I go, holy cow, I got to Oh, man. I'm like, wait, that's two days of pay. I go, I got to divide this by two. <laughs> so when I thought I made more than the boys, I was like, oh, not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting close. We're getting there, man. We're getting we're there getting eventually. There. But, uh, so yeah, Destination Chicago was awesome, dude. It was, uh, so on top of the high spot stuff. We were trending at number three all night and three for three hours after the show. Ended. Okay, the only reason we were number three is because Eminem dropped Kamikaze. Yeah, Eminem. We would have been. We would have been at least at number two. Eminem screwed us. Possibly number one. Possibly. I think in Chicago we could have been at number one. I think everybody who went to AW was starting to talk about Kamikaze because I know I was talking about Kamikaze at the show. No, I, I started talking about Kamikaze when we were eating uh, burritos. We I you fajitas fajita. with no tortillas and extra guacamole. Yes. Which you didn't finish. I finished. I didn't finish the rice. Oh, that's right. I no, don't I, finish the... Why would I eat the rice? I like the burrito. I thought they were, it was delicious. Brian hated the burrito. Our, uh, Arturo's is better. What's the, what's the other place called? Um, uh, Lazo's. I like Lazo's. So Laz, Lazo's and Arturo's are right next to each other on this Western. Weirdest setup. They're two places, two Mexican restaurants, both 24 hours. Right next door to each other, and it turns into a pissing contest of who gets more people. Yeah, I like I am. I'm probably not gonna go back to Lazo's. I would. Um, when I can, but like it's it's not like I have to drive an extra distance to go to. No, it's true. To Arturo, so I'm gonna go to Arturo's. And I'm gonna get my fajitas because the fajitas taste so much better. Shout out the burrito at Lazo's is better. Okay, That's so good. what we gotta do is we gotta break down the wall. Up Jericho, in between. Are you, th- are you talking about Mexican restaurants and walls? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Break them down. <laughs> Break down the barriers. All right, well, all right. <laughs> and, uh... All right, so... So we can eat both yeah, and have dinner at the same why time. Have, why have walls? That's why all have walls? Why have walls? So... Um, so, no, that was, uh... Dude, uh, yeah, I think Eminem screwed us. <laughs> okay, let's stop. <laughs> we, we're, we've been tangenting nicely. I know. <laughs> All right, enough about enough about uh, Mexican restaurants and all that stuff. Let's talk about more wrestling. Yeah, because there wasn't enough this weekend. There wasn't enough. So wait, we only did one show, right? <laughs> Let's not yeah, talk about it. Three. This is a thick episode, guys. Thick. Um. So wrestling won the tag title belts. That was a highlight. Yeah. That was that was the that was like the big thing of the night, and that had to be first because David Starr had to go to the UK or Germany, like. That night, I think he had, like he had an eleven thirty flight. Yeah, he was, he won the belts, and then just took off. He took. Who promo, drove him? He took a promo picture. Did he take a? Pro- yeah, he did. He took a promo picture and ran. Who? Uh, he cut a promo too. I would have just hopped him onto the blue line. Dude, that would have been the easiest thing. Would somebody I, drive him? Because he. I hope not. I hope somebody just put him on the blue line. That's all he should have done. He could have made it there in, in like forty minutes. Yeah. No, it would have been faster. It would have been like thirty. Yeah, we're already in Logan, dude. He could have. I hope he took the blue line. I hope he took the blue line. David Starr, I hope he took the blue line. Please. Uh, Can we tag the CTA in this? We'll, t- we'll, tag just, we'll tag David and see what he says. And CTA. And CTA. Uh, and then we had the the feud of uh, Jimmy Jacobs and Brody King versus Sammy Callahan and Jess. Yo, this was this match was, was flame. It was a lit match. This is lit. Would this be the fun light? Flame emojis, fire emoji, fire. fire emoji, fire emoji, fire emoji, fire emoji. This match was insane with the dives and the brutality. There was, there was all dives. Like, all my pictures, I'm like, cool, I'm just going to just post all dives. It's just uh, <laughs> dives, crowd dives. There was so much hate in this match. It I love cra- it. I love I love personal feuds that don't need a belt or don't need a title. There's a promo, a social media promo that you did, Sammy and Jess, prior to this match. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> I the fact that you're reminding me about a promo that I filmed. That's how much shit that I did this weekend, dude. That it was such a good promo. That's on YouTube. It's on everything. Uh, I highly recommend people watch this promo. That's a fantastic promo. It's extremely believable. It's it, it, it it's a captivating promo. Go watch it. It's Sammy and Jess sitting. Where'd you guys film that? In the park. Uh, that was around the corner. In the alley, in um, oh, against the fence, against the fence, in front of the bank. Okay, then real quick sidebar: When was ACH's promo filmed? On the roof. Yeah, I was gonna say, were you guys on the roof? We went on the roof. How'd you get on the roof? We we went there. 
Okay. <laughs> Wink. I was with Super ACH, sir. We can do anything. Because I was like, this looks like they're on the roof. Yeah, we went on the roof. You guys were like looking at the, the square, the actual Logan yeah. Square. And I was like, where the hell are they? They're getting this view. Yeah, it was pretty dope. Is there stair- There's like access to the roof? Yeah. Ooh, I know where. Shh. <laughs> Shush. Ain't it tiny secret? Shush. Okay. <laughs> All right. I know where that is. All right. All right. That's pretty badass. You guys did it on the roof. Yeah. I like to do... I figured it was. My, my thing when I like to do promos is I don't like to have the same background when yes. I do when I do promos. I hate when they do that. Um, Like, Keith hates me sometimes when we're at Bourbon Street because I was like, nope, different section. Good. No, no, no. But Keith was finding all the different spots at Logan because Lo- Keith knew more about the spots than I did at, at Logan. Keith lives at and Logan he, Square. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, like he has a bunk. Yeah, <laughs> but he's good about it at Bourbon as well. But I'm just like I don't like I don't want all the same promos in front of the brick wall. Yeah, or all the same promos in the garage. Yeah, I I want it. I like to change it up. I like I'll do it on the stairs in the garage or like. I'm not even. I'm not gonna. Or how we did the Jimmy Jago throw. I'm not gonna talk about that one. That that one is staying as a seek. That let's keep that cave. That one. That cave. 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 That was. Everyone still thinks that's at, in front of my house. In your house. People thought that was at my house. <laughs> it was at Jimmy's house. Well, because we filmed it so much earlier in the day. Yeah. And so it was broad daylight when we filmed it. You know, Jimmy doesn't get enough credit for being Jimmy, a promo guy. He's a great promo. Jimmy man. is a goddamn fucking mastermind. No, he's a damn good promo. No, like he is he is just pure talent in this little tiny John Stamos looking man, handsome man. Dude, he's so photogenic. Do you know what I did? Um I just posted up you haven't seen it because you were in practice when I uploaded the photo. I tried to recreate live. The, we're gonna look at this. I tried to recreate the, remember the Jimmy Jacobs photo I took last year? At the uh, at Berwin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried to recreate it almost mm-hmm. When he was cutting the promo, when uh, that's a badass promo. On fri- when he did the promo on Friday, uh, at defining moment. Yeah, I. Um, Where'd you post this? I don't see it up here. I did it. Well, what you call it? Your girlfriend uh, commented on the album. What she just said? said, "Are we even allowed back?" <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that. That that's defining moment. We're gonna get to that's that. That's defining moment. We're gonna get to that reason why that question was posted. Jeez. That's hilarious. Um, oh, here I'll, I have, I have it pulled up because I was I was posting him in the camera. Group. Oh, I see. So he is very fucking. Photogenic, he is very right? photogenic, and wrestlers with emotions are so much better than people who can't show emotions in a match. It's because he's a princess. He's a he princess, always, but no, for real. Way. In matches, it makes such a big difference. Hundred percent, yeah. For moments when, instead of just having like a straight face or yeah. closing your eyes or whatever, when people have emotions in the matches, it just creates a, a so much better of a moment that you can use. It's the veteran thing, man. The guy is... like, can you imagine Muhammad Ali with a straight face when he did the when he did the little. The boxing, the iconic boxing oh, picture. God. That, you know, I side note, I saw an interview with the guy who took that shot, and oh man, we, he he was saying, I saw it. No, I read an interview. It was like it was like the photographers who took like all those iconic photos throughout the years. Yeah, that one, the national, the Afghan Hope girl. They interviewed me for my Jimmy Jacobs one day, one, one day, or my Matt Riddle picture. Yeah, one day. I mean, <laughs> if Matt Riddle ends up saving the world and changing it somehow. <laughs> Like, hey, hey the last thing he's got to do on his checklist is retire Brock now. And now Jeez. he's... I, I don't think it's a coincidence that the day that Riddle signs, the next day Brock is gone. I mean, we 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 know it's not going to be Lashley because he, he's doing some weird stuff now from what I understand. So it's not going to be Lashley to retire Brock. Maybe, maybe it's Riddle. It'll be Riddle. Hey, bro. You want to, like, retire? Take a little breath, breath ski? I don't... What? <laughs> Why do you sound like Leo? Uh, not Leo. It's uh, who's the orange Ninja Turtle? Why am I completely blanking right now? Michelangelo. Michelangelo. I was completely blanking. Wow, bro. I was. You sound like him when they did the. <laughs> That's what he sounds like. No, yeah, no. But I'm saying you sound like him. Remember when they did the live action uh show? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the version you sound like. The you know who uh, 
who was one of the voices in the live action movie. Who? For Donatello, it was Corey Feldman. You want to know even something better? So, Kevin Nash was Shredder. Super Shredder. Super Shredder. That was Kevin Nash. So. I remember liking the movie more when I found that out. <laughs> even though it came out before I was into wrestling. And then I got into wrestling, I was like, whoa. What man, a mark. I could see. It really looks like Diesel, you know. Like, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, Kevin Nash is also in The Punisher. He, he played he the is, Russian. He, he was. No lines, just grunts. <clears throat> he cut his hair for that one. He did. It's terrible. That's when they did the uh, the the hair match in WWE. He, that's what, he, did he tear his quad with short hair? I don't remember. <laughs> he tore his quad with every hair. He, Nash tore his quad brushing his teeth yesterday. Probably. <laughs> All right. Um, what do so, we have? Did we make it to the defining moment? No, yet? not yet. Jesus Christ. We're, we're 30 minutes into this, Oh, my guys. God. We are sorry. This we, is so this is thick. so thick. So thick. Oh, God. Um, we got MJF versus Colt Cabana. Wait, now, are we still on Destination? We're still on Destination. Shut up, dude. We got This is a great moment. How dare you? The, the, this, how this. dare you ruin? Okay, I didn't see this coming. This was a great moment. All right, let's do it. So I knew about this. You know about the song? Huh? I didn't know about the song. Oh, I knew about everything. I popped huge for this. I knew about everything. Right, this was awesome. Go uh, ahead, break it down. It, it, I, it was instant karma <laughs> that you paid back at me the next day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I hate you. Uh, so, MJF and Colt have a little bit of history. Colt is a uh, absentee father of <laughs> MJF's life. He's his father, yeah. And uh, so, uh, Colt wanted to uh, make up some time and teach his kid how to play some baseball. Well, in the middle of the match, they pull out the bag, which and a vel- which usually a velvet bag indicates thumbtacks, thumbtacks or Legos, but in this case, it indicated a catcher, two catchers' mitts, and a baseball, and then out of nowhere, "Cats in the Cradle" by Harry Chapin starts playing, <laughs> and it was one of the and I still popped for it. It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in an AW ring. I was like. like when like, the song started playing, everyone lost their shit. Everybody lost their mind. Especially the people who know the song. It's, it's yes. about, you know, like, I mean, background the song, but nobody knows Cats in the Cradle. It's about a, a dad who's too busy for his son, and then the son grows up, and he's too busy for his dad. You know? That, so, like, it's a father and son song. Yeah. So, like, they start playing Catch, and while Cats in the Cradle's playing, and I was, like, losing my mind. It was one of the greatest things I've ever. We seen. have the clip. Uh, High spots posted it. It's retweeted on our on the AEW timeline. Yes, yes. You have to watch that. This. That alone should sell the show. That should sell the whole show. It's funny because Cole came up to me earlier that day. He didn't tell me what this was for. He's like, I need a bag, and I was like, What kind of bag? And he's like, I need something like you know what you would normally put thumbtacks in. And I was like, Well, I don't have. Let me see what I got. Then I'm like, I had the ring, the uh, the belt bag for the. Um, for the heritage, all the tag belts. And I was like, I have this. He's like, perfect, let's do that. So, like, I find out later what that was all about, and that was great. So, yeah, awesome moment. Hilarious. And I think that was one of the highlights of the show. Are you are you joining us for this podcast, Basil? I am joining us. Oh, I don't know why I just saw your text. Why are you you looking at texts from me when you're you look at You look at your phone all the time. But man. I keep talking. Yeah, but I thought it was I thought it was new because the notification went up. Multitask. Hey, I don't know if it was a family emergency right now. <laughs> I'm on high alert. Yeah, okay, all right, all right. Side note, uh, get well uh, soon. <laughs> get well soon. Um and then Colt and Colt taught his son how to play some baseball. It was hilarious. I don't, we can't I shouldn't we shouldn't talk much about it. We should just say watch it because it's worth a watch. Yes. Like let's just watch it. We'll just say it uh it didn't end too well. <laughs> It was good though. It was hilarious, and then we had an amazing main event. It was one of my favorite ACH title matches. You know, um, yeah. He, he first of all, ACH came out to Tiger Mask. Yeah, did he get that in Japan? Yeah, he got it in Japan, of course. He's because he was Tiger Mask W in in New Japan. So he, uh, this was like a rematch in the LaSalle match they had. It was, but it was just. Better though. It was much better, in my opinion. I feel like they got their groove, like they they got that like feel out in LaSalle, and they're like, all right, now we can really kill it in Chicago. Yeah, because that was their first match, I think. That in was LaSalle. yeah, that was their first match. They've done like tags mm-hmm. and stuff like that, but they really brought it. 
like oh, time, yeah. so many suplexes, so many the kicks. The, uh, it was so intense. much. It was a great match. It was an intense uh, match. ACH retained. Good match though. I think he, he got him with the Ghostbuster, right? He did. Is that I, what he calls it? Does he call it a Ghostbuster? I don't know. I thought I thought he did call. I don't know moves honestly. Like the name of like all these like crazy moves, horrible with. Does he call it a bust? A Busta Busta? Brain Busta! Yeah. Ghostbuster. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 You know, if we, if we edited sound, we should play that in here. Right <laughs> but we're you all talk all we the don't, time. We don't have that production value yet. No, no. We're, we are a talk show. We're just, we're just drop, drag and drop. We're a drag and drop drag show. Drag and drop. We, we, we get it to you quick, though. We so. get things out, listening. It's, it's, it's spinning on your devices. Yes. So I do want to wait. Side note: I want. I think we eventually we should add that. I could. I can get this done for us from Kyle, my my co-host in the Impact Total Nonstop Impact. Tell him we'll put him on the payroll. Yeah, of hot dogs, and of hot dogs and handshake and virtual handshake. He loves doing. He's good at that stuff. Though. Okay, we so. can we can we can drop it to him and have him do his magic. Um. So side note: Let's go back to our shows because we're only one quarter oh into God. this thick episode. Oh um, God. We got Defining Moment the next day. Another sellout crowd at Logan Square Auditorium. Back-to-back nights, baby. Back-to-back nights. And it was pretty crazy because we had Dave Meltzer, Brian Alvarez, and Wade Keller. Keller was in the audience, too? Keller was up on the on the balcony. No, I know. I, I, well, it wasn't Keller. It was, what's his name? Um, I thought it was Keller. No, it was the other guy. Uh, the other guy from PW Torch. Not Mike Johnson. Oh, my God. Bruce Mitchell. I think, Bruce he, Mitchell. I think Bruce Mitchell was in the crowd. I could have sworn I saw Wade Keller. But really? I think it was Bruce Mitchell was in the crowd. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to confirm. Yeah, confirm that. But yeah, we had <laughs> we had an all star cast in that in that audience, man. Uh, but that was, I mean, it was hot. I, I think the crowd night two at Defining Moment was way. No, it uh, was Wade Keller. Was it Wade Keller? It was Wade Keller. Damn, he was there, huh? Yeah, he was. Uh, he was up in the bird's nest. No shit, I didn't see yeah, Wade Keller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw Melter. I'm not like, I, I like I know what Melter looks like. Keller could blend in. I, you know, I mean, I know what he looks like, but I wouldn't catch him. Melter kind of has a distinct look. Alvarez, too. Like I know what Alvarez looks like now. But I I'm like not. Alvarez. Alvarez is cool. He's chill. I'm not a big dirt sheet guy, but I respect the fact he these gets guys, it though. I respect that these guys have made a living doing this. That's fantastic. Yeah, he make they make a living, but Alvarez, I feel like gets it. I mean, uh, he, he doesn't. He doesn't so? take himself too serious. I like he could joke around with fans. Oh, that that part side. I'm thinking like from his dirt sheet side. I don't. I don't read dirt sheets. Yeah, I don't either. Um, I just like I had. I have a beef with the WCW book he wrote. I think it's ridiculous. Oh my god, nobody cares. No, they care. Eric Bischoff is very upset at that still. Good, let <laughs> him be. Do you do you want you want to know something else that was really bad? Bischoff tries to make fun of Keller and. Meltzer, like two days, two or three days after Starcast. Apparently, their booth was like pretty close to one another. Oh, really? And then he goes, "Oh, I wonder. Oh, I, if, I wonder if Meltzer was on steroids or whatever. Oh, what kind of steroids does he take? Whatever." Something? And then everyone's like, "Dude, why are you saying this? Like, when you're far away from Starcast, when you were like right there." Oh, that's true. It just looks really bad, in my opinion. For I, I wonder how it worked out because like. Pritchard, Bischoff, Shivani, they all hate Meltzer. Well, Meltzer said his and him his and Alvarez's line went so long that they had to stay extra and Bischoff didn't have a long line. I saw that. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't, I'm I really, not getting involved in all that. I really shit. don't care. Yeah. I think dirt cheat drama It's so petty. Like, dude, you guys are fighting about who can write and talk about stories. Yeah. Of what wrestlers do in the ring. I don't know. I'm I appreciate I appreciate that they came to our show though. That's pretty it was cool. cool. Like, I'm not bashing on like the industry or anything like that. No, I just no. I just feel like what's the point of the drama? Right. I 100% agree. It was too good of a weekend to have any of that stuff. I'm not a dirt sheet guy whatsoever. I don't like the dirt sheets, but again, the fact that these guys, this is their full time living, and they're like living comfortably with this, that's mind boggling. That's amazing. I mean, hats off if you can do that. Yeah. I would love to. I would love to pull six figures talking wrestling. Shit. That'd be awesome. It'd be amazing. Talking. Not even, like, Meltzer doesn't even perform, he just writes. Dude, Meltzer, do you know what, do you know what I found out what Meltzer does to work out? He lifts weights during Raw. 
Like, he'll just start bicep curling. I mean, why not, right? You're sitting there anyway. He just, sit, while he's watching, like, his in ar- the commercial breaks. I gotta he say, just, he just, his arms were jacked. His arms, I met, I said hello to him at the show. He's hella jacked. No, his arms were fantastic. Yeah. Uh, no, that's cool. So we had a lot of people in that audience, man. That was. We pretty- also had another special guest. Yeah, we did, and it was great. We uh, <laughs> you want you want to set it up, and then we'll we'll see. So who came we out. had um, Trevor Lee versus DJ Z for the Heritage title, and in the middle of the match, Trevor Lee um, did he, not follow he, wrestling rules that he implemented himself. He knocked Stifler out, right? He, man, I like Stifler. Stifler's a man, dude. Why couldn't it have been Nate? I mean, Nate should have a thing where he's the one getting knocked out. He should. Sorry, Sil- Nate. Silver just texted me that he wants uh, 17 by Winger to be his entrance music from now on. <laughs> Wait, Ruffs get entrance music? No, but Silver wants entrance music. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> he said at the next Warrior show. So did he get entrance music at Warrior? No. He's like, hey, I want this to be my next. <laughs> like, I think so he knows that like, AW is no shot. No. Um, so we had the legendary Earl Hebner run down to the ring. This was incredible. Because nobody saw this coming. Like, Sifra gets knocked out and Earl Hebner makes the run. <laughs> I was, popped. I knew he was there, too. Oh, uh, like, I, I knew he was there, but I didn't know for... I didn't want to know what match he was in. I kind of wanted to be shocked about it. He ran and he out. Just, he tried to run out. Well, he, he got out there and he did the Earl Hebner spot. The shove, yes. the shove, shove. The shove, shove, knocked down, kicked to the ball spot. It yeah, was he was amazing, dude. Trevor Lee got him big time in, in the in the nut shot. It was great. It was a great moment. I think it was a pop of the night. Yeah, because no, nobody saw no, it no. Pop of the night came a little bit later. You think so? Uh, one hundred percent. All right. I so, st- I still I still vote with this one, but yeah, yeah, we'll go. Well, at least Trevor Lee was in both both high spots. That's very true. No pun intended. Pun high, intended. High spots was not in in this high spot. No, yeah, this I, we were not streaming this, night two. I wish we were. Well, no, no, no. This one, two. we'll talk about why. But I'm glad we didn't stream yeah, this one. Yeah, this is. Um, I mean, imagine imagine the press. <laughs> uh, so, um, Trevor Lee retained over DJ Z. Then we had um, the besties in a rematch with uh, with wrestling, but wrestling invoked Freebird rules. Mm-hmm. So it was Jeff Cobb and Eddie because David was already across the world at this point. In Germany. Germany. And uh, pretty straightforward match. But Trevor Lee comes out. Uh, on behalf of wrestling. On behalf of wrestling. Well, he was already he came out with them. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's in the ring. Scarlett goes up to him, starts making out with him, and pulls him down. And gets him in a freaking Canadian destroyer the day after she does the Doomsday device. Unbelievable! This this girl is ridiculous. She did this in heels too, not the same heels. Different heels. They, they these were like the flatter ones, or not flatter, but the like, the heel part was yeah. flatter. I don't know how to describe it. it those are like. Can uh, somebody tell me what type of heels those are? Those are those are platform, I think heels, because they're like the flat heel, right? Flat bottom, yeah, yeah like platform, a water base. Platform, okay, platform. Heels. So she did that, uh, and then moving on, uh, we're trying to try to speed things up a little bit here. Um, this podcast will be a total of seven hours and eighty-three no. minutes. Please we'll no. be here till till the wee hours of the morning. We'll be here the morning forever. Gee, all right, what do we have? Come on, let's move it along. Let's move it <laughs> along, kids. All right, so this okay. Now we're gonna talk about a heavy situation. Um, so Sammy. Callahan and Jimmy Jacobs had a street fight. It, anything goes. It was anything goes. In my opinion, it kind of did go a little too far. Um, now, split. I okay. I talked to everybody, you know, like close to us, and there's a split opinion on this. Well, the only reason I think it went too far, everybody knows we're not supposed to damage the, the chairs. Venue. Yeah. The, the venue's chairs. Like, it's it's a well-known thing. We have chairs provided to use to for that, that situation. That we bring, yeah. That we bring so that those can get destroyed. Yeah. But it was it was a little too excessive with the building's chairs because the building doesn't just do wrestling. 
Yeah, they do like a tons of their events. banquet hall, weddings, weddings, and, yeah. all that stuff. They need to keep those chairs. Yeah, for events like you destroy chairs, that's less people you can book in that area. Yes. So, uh, in the middle of the match, this is this is a hundred percent shoot. If you want to explain. So middle of the match, you know they're going at it. They're on the stage. Chairs are involved. They're piling up the chairs. Uh, I'm standing by the production booth. I'm not in it at this point. I'm just standing on the side, ne- like kind of off the side and of it. I'm on the stage taking taking photos. photos. Like I'm right there on the stage. Right. So I'm there. Tone music. Tony sound guy. Tony's is sitting at his spot on on the uh, the booth, and. I just noticed the building manager run behind me, grab like the accessory mic, and just yell over the entire crowd mid match, quit breaking all of our chairs, you fucking asshole. And I'm like, who the hell said that? Yeah, and we we're like, nobody recognizes so his voice. Crowd goes dead silent. Because they're thinking. It killed the crowd. Killed the crowd. Because everybody's thinking, like, wait. At first I thought it's like, oh, it's another wrestler like interfering, but then it's like, why would he care about the chairs? And then the guy says another line. He goes, well, no, Sammy. So Sammy, it, I'm over by Sammy. And Sammy yells, I'll do whatever the fuck I want. Well, I'll break everything. But then the guy says something else. And he's, he's like, you guys, you guys. He's like, he's like, you, he's like, fine, you'll pay for them. He goes, okay. And then grabs like four more chairs. Yeah, and starts smashing them. The guy then look, gets in my face. And goes, you guys are always breaking our goddamn chairs. And this, I'm like, dude, why didn't you just tell me? I have an earpiece that I can tell the referee. You don't go over the mic. Like, that's forever on the tape now. That's what that bothers me. Yeah. Like, dude, you've you've cemented that on our on our product. That's product, not cool. Yeah. And so I was like, you could have told me, right? Anyway, they get in there. As, okay, is it at this point you were closer to it? Is this when the security run up after this? No. So what ends up happening is I saw Keith go out there. Keith, yeah, to so, pull more chairs away from the situation. Well, no, no, this is not at that point yet. Yeah, yeah, that's so. Later, right. What happens is they finally get off the stage. Like all the fans are confused at what to do. Oh my god, yeah, it was nuts. They get off the stage and security gets up on stage. Right. To and like starts, look at stuff. And my friends were sit, sitting on stage, and I go, "Hey, if you guys sit on stage, you have nothing really to worry about." Yeah, yeah. You guys want to worry about? One of your friends was like, "That was one of my chairs." <laughs> yeah, and and security would not let them sit back down. And There's for two, a little the bit, two security guards. Yeah, right? it took yeah. a little bit for them to sit back down. So then Sammy and Jimmy goes in the ring. Sammy starts or like making fans bring more of the regular chairs into the into the ring, like okay. into the ringside area. So then Danny and Keith um run in, okay. and and I I stop taking photos at this point, and we're screaming at we're like, Sammy, no more chairs, no more chairs. I put my camera down. And grab chairs, like from the floor side. Cause like at no, this point, from the ring. Okay, yeah. Cause I saw Keith pulling we're out, grabbing chairs from the ring. Cause I was looking. I was. I'm going at this point. I'm going back and forth, and I'm like dealing with the guy who's yelling at me about the whole thing. Yeah, I'm. I'm ringside. Like I've never felt safe. I've never felt more safe ringside during a Sammy match. <laughs> right now, because okay, so I, you're, you're pulling chairs out. Me, Danny, Keith, we're we're trying to get chairs out. I'm yelling at Sammy. I'm like, Sammy, no more chairs. No more chairs. Like, stop, for real. <laughs> the whole crowd starts, no more chairs. No, then Sammy's like, break the, no, the crowd starts going, yeah, break, break the chair. the chair. I hear that. Yeah. Break the chairs. And I'm just like, oh, God, this is going to be horrible. And and I'm looking around, and I'm seeing security guards coming in. Yeah. And I go, we're going to get shut. Like, literally through my mind, we're going to get shut down. Well, the one security guard, I got to say, and this is like, because there's been a fl- Are you talking about the douche with the glasses? Not the douche with the glasses. The guy with the beard. Okay. Uh, Because there were so many false reports about this that I had to like jump in and correct. Because um, number one, they said that after all this happened that the audience was removed from the building. Nobody was removed from yeah. the building. Let's put that on, right? Because like, I had to correct, a, I like Sean S- Fightful, Wrestling Inc. Everybody started record- reporting that they were removed. I was like, nobody got removed. The match continued through all this. Yeah. But the one security guard who got feisty was feisty all night about something. 
And this was like his green light to go nuts. He was just agitated. He just wanted to be the hard security yeah, guard. Yeah, all night. I noticed, I'm like, this guy from the beginning of the show was like puffing to do something. All right, so okay. It's all right. You're pulling the chairs away. Is that at this point, at what point did he, I'm trying to like pinpoint the time because I'm getting yelled at by the dude. Well, I'm I'm trying to focus back on the match. Yeah. So there was so much stuff that you caught that I missed because I'm trying to stay as professional as possible because right. I'm the only person ringside, I, I believe. I'm trying to remember if, if Watson was ringside. I, it was just so hectic and crazy. Yeah, it was nuts. I literally... I don't think he was. Everything flashed so fast yeah. for me that night just because of, like, I legit almost felt in danger. Because of how the security guards were acting. Um, and how Sammy was just not giving a fuck. Well, I think Sammy kept thinking it was part of the show. Like, we put him up to this. Yeah, that's that's the only explanation. Because Sammy legitimately wouldn't. Like. Well, he like, well, like Shakira was like, stop it. And he's like, get away from me. He shoved him. The, the guy's like, stop touching me. And he's like, he's like, get away, get out of my face. And he shoves him again. The guy's like, stop, I'm a cop. Then he flashes his gun. Yeah. And that's he never all... pulled the gun. He didn't pull the gun. Let's clarify that. He flashed. He he flashed it. It was in his. It was tucked. It was in his holstered. Pant. It, it was, was tucked in his holster. Yeah. And he just flashed it at Sammy to prove that he was an actual cop. Look, I'm gonna say this. I didn't see a badge, and I think you can't show a badge because you're off duty. Yeah. And you just... can't show a badge if you're off duty. Yeah, you can't show a badge. You're off... But the way the guy acted, he didn't act like a police officer. No. I've never seen a police officer off duty or not. Act so immature because he was acting immature with like earlier in the show too. Is the cop the one with the glasses? No, okay. cop was one with the beard. Black guy with the beard. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So he was acting so ridiculous all night. I just couldn't figure out what was his deal. So I don't know, man. He fla- the, so the gun gets seen. Sammy gets super pissed. Uh, fans were never removed. I need to clarify that because I was I was rumor killing for like two days after the show, and so fans never got removed. But uh, match continued. They finished it. You know, finished it. Um, Sammy won. <laughs> I mean, at that point, it's like, did it even matter what the hell was going well, on? Well, he drilled. He. I was taking pictures because I couldn't remember how the match ended. Yeah. Um. He drilled him through. Uh, oh yeah. A, dude. The guardrail. Yes. Yeah, so they the guardrail. they made a guardrail table. That was ridiculous. With more chairs. <laughs> I didn't even see any of it get cleared up. I I, I ran off. To like check on the situation. I know everybody was really mad. Sammy was super pissed. Building was super pissed. Everything's calm though. Like let's put that out there right now. We the the, the situation's been diffused. Nobody's losing the building. Everybody's cool. Sammy will be at the Jim Lina Memorial Tournament. Yes, Sammy is still booked for AW. He's not he's not out. He is he's all in. He's all in. All right. That's enough. <laughs> he was not all in though. He was all he's all in for AAW. Yes. All right. So then, um, that was wild. So, I think it, it took a lot of the air out of the room, though. I'm re- that's what bummed me out the most. It did, well, dude. It was just it just started the night of chaos because oh god, we go into the world title match, which is Brody versus ACH. Yes. Normal match at first. Um. Well, early in the match, from what I understand, Brody got caught wrong. Um, so I was looking back at the pictures, and I s- think I saw the picture. Can you catch it? I'm gonna double check and make sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk, I mean, I have to really only talk to ACH about it. Okay. I don't want to confirm, because, so, Brody got knocked, um, he took a kick wrong, and con- was concussed. He won the, he won the match. Like, I mean, we're just gonna go into this part. He won the match. He does not remember. He couldn't remember the match. Yeah. Uh, he was glassy-eyed, for sure. Even post-match, uh, our nurse, Nicole, did a concussion test on him. She's like, you have a concussion. And, like, he legit was out. But uh, a credit to him, though, for getting through the match. He got through the match. He acted like a professional. Backstage, he was fine. Well, it, well, let's mention at least he did win the championship. Basically. I did, I did say did that. You mention, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he won, he won, and you got a sweet ass shot of that belt of that win. That's a yeah. that's a beautiful shot, man. Yeah, it was. I like to get the shot when the, when a when they win with the with like the ref. Yeah. I mean, I changed it up a little bit because with the David Starr one because. 
That picture of just Eddie flicking off everybody. Yeah, that was pretty good. Flicking off the besties was just. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. No, um, I no, it's a great shot, and I love that. That you got, it's like it, it's one of those shots. It's like it perfectly captures a moment. Like I can see Brody himself. Like that's that was my moment. You know, like he yeah. could take that shot. Uh, but yeah, he was concussed, man. It was pretty pretty rough. He took a while to get ready and get out too. I remember, like he was out, man. No, he was in the locker room for a solid half hour, forty five minutes before yeah. he. I think, you know, I don't think you know about this too. So Brody's concussed. Nicole's giving him the concussion test, checking on him. In the middle of that, uh, uh, a, one of our fans had a, a seizure. Do you know about this? Yeah, yeah. No, I remember I told you. Yeah, because yeah. Because Nicole helped him. So yeah, it was it was one of our fans' dad. The dad, yeah, dad, the dad had a seizure. The dad leaving had the a ven- seizure, leaving ne- the venue. Yeah, Nicole helped him because we went outside and we see the ambulance. Right, so she ran from the locker room upstairs to help the guy, got him stable, took care of that, and then Brian, production Brian, was sick too. He was having trouble breathing, so she ran back upstairs to take care of Brian and make him like a makeshift like breathing apparatus. You know about yeah. this? This is like, dude, she was like in full nurse mode. It was amazing. She, Nicole's awesome. She patched up Stallion. Stallion had a cut. Yeah, Stallion had a nasty cut on nasty the Nasty cut. She made Brian a breathing device. I mean, she was all over the place, man. Uh, but then like the next day, she did check on Brody. He said it was a lot better. She gave him some stuff to do. So, yeah, like, I texted I texted Brody Sunday or Monday. I was like, hey, how are you feeling? I hope you're good. No, that was so, cool. Yeah, he said he was doing better. I mean, still, he was definitely concussed. But that's our new AEW champion, man. Welcome to the AEW uh, to the AEW championship uh, championship history lineage. So, um, but yeah, so that was cool. That was cool. That ended it. I really don't want to talk anymore about Friday night. I was. I'm. I'm not gonna be. We're. We'll tell you if shit was good. Destination Chicago was a perfect show, top to bottom. Perfect show. Defining right. moment. I left with a really sour taste in my mouth. You know what that is, though. What a con- it's perfect contrast. When we talk about like what can go right and what can go wrong, that's it. I mean, this sums it up. This is like what happens in independent wrestling. Yeah. I mean, we still we put out an amazing effort, but sometimes things just don't line things up. Things don't work out. I mean, well. you can go from a perfect show. We were on a high Thursday. We we're trending number three, huge, huge numbers on everything successful at the end to all these issues Friday. But that's the world of it. That's what you have to at expect. At least that show wasn't streaming live. No. <laughs> it's unfortunate that the, the writers... Can you imagine how bad it would have been if it was oh streaming live? The writers were in the... They were present for Friday, which sucks. Yeah. I wish they saw Thursday. I wish they saw Thursday as well. But, you know, it was... It was unfortunately just things that happened, man. You know, like you have to... The thing is, luckily for us, we have another show right away to make up for for friday yeah we have that coming up this saturday in la salle so uh i'd seize the day but we'll get to that in a second uh so yeah that was that was the double shot man that was a double shot and uh, next day was all in all in uh i did i did photography at all out so you were all out and in. uh and i was half djz's hype man because wrestling fans sitting outside in the heat in humidity a, in a dance tent in a dance tent is not a very exciting <laughs> moment to see so it was it was so there was like signings for the first three hours and everything was kind of slow paced were the signings included in the 20 bucks no they were separate there was uh it was like it was i think it was like 50 bucks to get okada's picture or, 50 dollars on top of the 20 yeah god Are yeah you serious? So these signings have gotten expensive, man. dude. All in was expensive. I mean, all, that's fine, but it's that, a big show. All this went to pay for all in. But I mean, I can't believe that on top of Starcast, the, the signings have gotten because they pricey. didn't know they didn't know how much I'm, I'm they just, didn't know how much it would stream how how much how many how much money they would generate from streaming. I'm 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 like shocked that wrestling fans were able to pay all this. Yeah, but it's not. It's not like a you know. Wrestling fans aren't known to have, be, have, be like a. It's not a big revenue demographic. So where do they get that I money? Took, I took pictures of everybody for free, yeah. so I didn't have to pay for those. Oh, good, <laughs> I, I, dude. Uh, Paige, Hangman Page was legit outside without shoes on. Oh, really? It was awesome. Full gimmick. It's amazing. So, 
Um, we did that. DJ Z was the DJ. Um, Fitting. After the signings were done, Flip Gordon comes out, um, starts break dancing. Uh, there was like a sign contest going on. There was like kind of like a dance party atmosphere afterwards. Can, can, we, can we put our DJ for a second? Like, what a great dude DJ is. DJ's my boy. DJ Z is. Day that is a day one dude that's right a day there. One dude. He, that's he a was, day one dude for me. I remember because he was at Impact at the time, and I was like, I was super like I was a big fan of his, but he treated me so awesome as a fan, and then like as a colleague, that was amazing. You, do you knew? Do you know how I met DJ? Squared Circle. Yeah, that was so. The, his first day, he moved from from Washington to Chicago. Him and Chris Hero went to have dinner at Squared Circle. That's right. Yeah. And this was, like, the day before Chris Hero um, returned to ROH. He did CZW and ROH in one night. Did he really? Yeah. Because it was, like, Philly and Jersey or something like that. So you, he was at the beginning of the show for CZW. Oh, wow. He, I think he had a match with Drew Gulak at CZW. And he's like, you know what? I want this match right now. Has it at the beginning of the show, and then drives up, and then shows up uh, at the main event, after the main event, at ROH, and attacks Adam Cole and Matt Hardy. Wow. I uh, I remember when, D- when I, I had added DJ on Facebook before I like, really knew him, knew him, and when he mentioned he's moving to Chicago, I had told him about the Squared Circle, and I was like, you should check it out, because he lived right behind it. Yeah. And, I was, and he's like, oh, cool, and like, he didn't go for, forever, but I guess he went when you met him. No, he went the first day he moved. Oh, really? Okay. He says that was the first day he moved to Chicago. Okay, yeah. So I was there. So we, me, him, uh, Lisa, Victoria, the owner mm. at the time. Uh, Did you see her? She was in town this weekend. I didn't see her at all. She didn't call her anything? I, we do, she was doing StarCast stuff all weekend. Yeah. Um, I wish she came to an AEW show. But I know. She could have come in. Yeah. I haven't seen her in forever. And... Uh, so th- that's when I met DJ, and then I added him on Facebook, and then yeah. we've always like not really talked too much because random wrestler, and then now him and I live down the street from each other, and we're always talking. Yeah. Like we talk like almost every day, him and I, and we're always talking about ideas. And he's a great dude, man. So he's always using my photos for like promos. He and is, stuff I know. Like that, he tags so. you too, which is nice. He, he does. He doesn't cut out the watermark. Do you know what? People people don't cut out the watermark much anymore, um, and if they do, they do credit me. Okay, that's good. So, because um, that, that, that's cold, man. It is. But, yeah. I hate when people do that. But if you're gonna crop the watermark, at least tag. Yes. At the very least. I agree. Um, but yeah, so DJ was DJing. Uh, that... Then we went into all in. We had the two suite. We did. It was nine of us in there. Uh, twelve. We we There's packed. 12. We packed all twelve. Gringo Local was in it. Gringo was there. Uh, I, I we was... had A W production crew in there. We had some of my friends from around the country that were in there. Uh, I had a Mickey Mouse hat on. You did have a Mickey Mouse hat on. We're not going to talk about the event too much. I mean, we didn't do any production there. We had nothing to do with it, but it was it was a great show. It was cool to see Cody win the title. Pop of the night. Really pop. um, To see the Bucks and all and Golden Elite and Ray and Bandino and Jericho, Jericho and Phoenix and that main event was on two X speed. Yeah, they had to be. They, got they had to be. They had 12, 12 minutes. minutes. Cut. <laughs> or eight minutes cut. You know what? They, it wasn't 12 minutes. Okay, so something everyone's saying is that the Marty thing went over. Yeah. It didn't go over. It wasn't Marty's. It was the show went 12 minutes over. Total I mean, all throughout everything. Yeah, I mean, you figure throughout everything, oh, 30 seconds here, a minute there. I feel like, I feel like the Hangman page. Or they the said that one. That took a lot They of said time. that one took the most time. That, that was a long segment, man. It was after. It was like... Ten minutes after, yeah, and I was like, "Dude, come on! Like, this is this that did eat up a lot of time." It did. It was, but it was it was it was a huge. It was such a payoff from being the elite. Yeah, that it, it did deserve the time. I just feel like if they weren't on normal pay per view, it wouldn't have been an issue. Yeah, I mean, if you're streaming it on a, on a network type of thing, like if it was just fight, uh, it would have been fine. But but uh, yeah, I mean, good great show. I mean, it's nice to be a part of it. It was a big reunion. I ran to so many friends. At that show. Yeah, I saw all your pictures and stuff, so. Yeah, and there's even more I didn't even take pictures with, so it was cool to see a lot of people. Uh, I think it was one of those things where, like, it was a big show, and what I thought was interesting was, like, it's so funny that, you know, it's kind of like, oh, it's the, it's, it's like the, it's the counter product to, like, the WWE, even though it's, like, it's drawing that kind of level and stuff. 
but it's like with the uh, the way it was, it was kind of like, well, you're kind of almost like that now. It was kind of a weird, it was a weird space to be in because it's like it's it's booked like an indie show. It's booked like the stuff we love. The wrestling itself was booked like an indie right. show, but the show was like well, felt like a WWE. Right show. now you're it's like now you're on that level. It, it felt bigger than ROH. It felt bigger than Impact. Yeah, it felt bigger than Lucha Underground. It felt bigger than MLW. Even though MLW has great production, it felt better because of like they had the whole stage. Yeah, they had everything. Like the stage cutout was in the Bullet Club logo. Yes, which is crazy. So it was a it was a well done show. It I, was a very well done show. Easy to get in and out. It was cool. We had good, we had premium parking. Man, it was sweet. Yeah, it was it was, <laughs> it was dope. Uh, but no, that was fun, man. I I'm glad we went. I got to park in the VIP parking you lot. You did. That's right. I, I got to park with the schmoes, with the marks, <laughs> with the marks. No, with fine. the marks. We went to Kuma's afterwards. That was good. There you go. You didn't go. I did not go to Kuma's. I went home and passed out. We went to Kuma's. Um, but yeah, no, that was cool. The next night, it wasn't over though, baby. The art weekend not, was not over at all. It was not. We went We went into overtime. We went to Warrior Wrestling at Marion Catholic High in Chicago Heights. Chicago Heights is not attached to Chicago. It's uh, the, the name, very misleading. You think Chicago Heights, oh, it's probably just like a like a bordering yeah, suburb. It was funny. So we, we, go to, we go to pick up some energy drinks, and Trent was like, oh, yeah, we'll be there in a little bit. I'm like, no, we won't. I see. I will be there in an hour. I was like, "Oh wait, I'm thinking Chicago Ridge, which is like, yeah, you're right, which is legitimately the Ridge of Chicago. Yeah, which is like a bordering. And I'm like, no, this is Chicago Heights, which is, again misleading. It's nowhere near Chicago, no, at all. But uh, so. Marion Catholic High School, which people might know that name because the nun made like the rounds on like Good Morning America and like every talk show. One of the sisters from Marion Catholic for throwing out the pitch of the White Sox game. That's awesome. Uh, she was like everywhere. And, uh, so I love how this, how Warriors ran. I mean, you got to experience it for the first time. First, the second show I got, I didn't go to the first one. This was fantastic. I got to meet Steve, the, uh, the head guy. Steve is, he's the principal, right? Steve is the principal and the promoter. He, I went up to him, I introduced myself. And the first thing he said to me was, oh my God, Tramp, I've been wanting to meet you. I've heard all about you. And I'm like, I might've talked you up. He was like, he knew, he's like, oh, I heard I heard you on two heels in a phase. I mean, like, he was so courteous. I'm like, I love this guy already. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he asked me to consult for the show, like, to give feedback. So he welcomed me completely with open arms in his in his locker room at his fan fest. He let me take in the show. Yeah. And he's like, I need, I want your feedback, so let's please talk. Uh, immediately, like, I'm super welcomed here. The show. He's the, a good person. Great person. His staff was very cool. The show, the way it was ran, I am beyond, beyond impressed with the way he ran the show. It was one of the most professional things I have ever seen in, for a live sporting event. That's what on I, an independent level. Like when I was talking to you about it the first time, you're like, eh, whatever. And then I was like, dude, no, this place. How it's ran is different. It's a very good morale here. Incredible. Everybody was happy to be there. I, he made, he made that show feel like a big deal, and I noticed that from his pre-show meeting, that he had with the with the, with the roster, he gave that impression to everybody like, like the the, the he they really felt like a star. Yeah. I mean, dude, he brought he brought a birthday cake for Dominic Ray Mysterio's son. Yeah, he brought and he also brought. Um, a cherry pie for Chelsea Green. Because she wanted a cherry pie. Yeah, well, no, her that's, song her, is cherry that's her pie, gimmick, yeah. the, the cherry pie. Right. Yeah, so. Uh, he had vegan options for Austin Aries. I mean, it was like, dude, this guy is incredible. But everybody felt great. Such a good vibe. Show was fun. I mean, a lot of those guys we see, there was, a, I mean, he had he had some good names. I mean, he had Rey Mysterio. He had three of the Impact Champions, three of the four Impact Champions, Cage, Aries, and Tessa. Yeah, just didn't have the tag champs. That was it. And he had they had their belts with them. The value for the fan fest is unreal. Twenty five bucks, and you get to meet everybody, all the stars, photo and autograph. And you get yeah, you get an autograph if you have your own item. Yes, you got free autographs, free photo, um, free photo, all that stuff. It was great. This is, they raised um, $12,000 for scholarships. Yeah, and all the money goes to that. Yeah, so the thing about Marian Catholic is they 
you think because it's a private school and all that stuff, it's everybody's rich. Uh, the majority of their students are on fixed incomes, financial um, aid, financial aid, okay. um, needing scholarships and stuff like that. It's to give these kids an opportunity that they might not normally get if they weren't rich. Right. Like, and I, and it was so cool. I mean, I thought that was so. And and with the with the vehicle being wrestling. Yeah, and they, they the awesome. fact that they raised twelve thousand was amazing. So cool, man! I I think it was like because all the food, all the ticket sales, all the merch, um, that they went through, mm. all of that goes back into the kids. So cool! I and uh, he gave me the Basil uh, uniform. Yeah, the Basil you had you were decked out in warrior gear. <laughs> I loved it. Every time I can get a shirt and a hat combo from That's any great. company, I mean, had, I do it. He had hats and shirts. He had towels. Specifically for that show, it's Warrior Wrestling 2. Yeah. Towel. I got a towel. I got and a I, towel. And I got a Marion Catholic, like, welcome kit. Yeah, there was, like... A goodie bag. It had, like, shirt... Or not a shirt. No, it had, like, a like a bag. Gla- and a glass. And it had a... A pen. Pop, pop socket. Pop socket, a pen. I mean, like, a little, like, welcome. I'm like, it was really, great. It was really dope. Um, The show was... The show itself was... Was good. The only thing, from my perspective, um, the lighting... Was yeah. pretty atrocious because their lighting, the normal, the lighting company that did their first show, mm-hmm. canceled on them a few days before. Yeah, that's rough. So they had to find somebody really quickly, and I mean, we made best do. Like I oh, was yeah. using my floodlight to help with the entrances, so it would look better on video. Yeah, and I can take better pictures with it. Um, so it kind of benefited everybody because I'm watching, I was like watching back the video and I was like, thank God I had my light on me just shining on the wrestlers. So it reminded me a lot. So if anyone is like an NWA arena fan, like, I like from stuff from the Omni back in like the eighties and whatnot, it had that kind of feel. It was like, you know, spotlit ring, dark crowd. So that, you know, like it. It's a big NWA thing. I, it's like feature the feature the ring type of thing. It is dim, but it's like really old school. So I didn't I didn't mind it. It was dim, but I I liked it. It kind of had that old smoky arena look to me. Yeah, but it was it was for it was a photographer. For, yeah. It was rough. It was rough. I I'm bet for a photographer lie. it sucks, but I I liked it from the perspective of like an old it school look, fan. It looked cool when you were because well, I I saw some shots from the from the crowd. Like yeah, I, yeah. like when I walked outside, I'm like. It looks cool because it's all on on the ring, like you said. I, I'm an old school fan, and, and to me, it reminded me of watching old NWA stuff, and I liked it. So that was cool. I got to talk about the War of Attrition match, the main event. Yeah. Um, well, first we had the uh, attraction, comedy attraction match almost. It, it wasn't as bad as everybody was making it out to be. Uh-huh. Uh, the David Arquette, RJ City. Yeah. Versus uh, Frank the Clown and James Ellsworth. The David Arquette. I'm talking former WCW. Former WCW World Heavyweight Champion David Arquette. And current like actor still. Like his IMDb is blown up. I had no idea he was still acting this much. But he's He's crazy. He's all over the place. Executive producing and acting. David Arquette. Side note, got to meet him. Super cool guy. He's super chill. He is the man, dude. I was like, this guy's awesome. Speaking of somebody who you met, or who we met, uh... Adam Cole, baby. Was hanging out. Was hanging out backstage. And that dude is hella chill. He's very handsome, man. Uh, he's very handsome. He's easy on the eyes. Um, he is. I talked with him for about 20 minutes. He was talking to everybody. Yeah, That's dude. Cool. He was super chill. He was just... The environment, man. I'm telling you, that environment was so welcoming. Just like backstage. Well, we were all hanging out backstage watching the show stream. He just chilling and hanging out. You yep. know, hanging, having a good time. Um... So the war of attrition match. Okay, I gotta say, I am I. Do you want me to explain how the match goes? Well, yeah. Let me set it up. Let me set up like my thought. Okay. I'm an old school fan. I love concept matches that are different because I feel like right now we've fallen into a pattern of the same old stuff. Sometimes wrestling in general. I think you know we they, it's relying a lot on formula. When somebody comes around and interjects a new formula and a new idea into that it blows me away this war of attrition match is one of the coolest things i have seen in a while so i'll let you break it down so the war of attrition match is eight men start four on four 
Break down the eight, though, because it was, it was action-packed eight, though. Star-studded. Oh, dude, you, so you had Austin Aries, Rey Mysterio, um, Rey Phoenix, Pentagon, Sammy Guevara, um, Brian Cage, uh, who, uh, um, Rich Swan. Mm-hmm. Uh, did I get everybody? Was that eight? Did you name eight? Yeah. Austin Aries. Yeah. Uh, Austin Aries, Brian Austin Aries, C- Brian Cage, Penta, Penta Phoenix. Phoenix, Sammy, Guevara, um, Rich Swan, Rey Mysterio, Rey Mysterio. Who are we missing? Oh my god! Oh, Jeff Cobb. Jeff Cobb. Jeff Duh. Cobb also um, was in it. So it's four on four, and the winner of that match, um, the winning team advances. The winner of that match, whoever gets the pinfall or the submission victory, got to pick, um, got to pick their tag partner. So the the team was Penta, Phoenix, Sammy, and Cage versus Cobb, Aries, Ray, and Swan. Right. Sammy pin Sammy Guevara pins uh, Rich Swan. Right. Sammy picked. Uh, Pentagon as his tag partner, so right. it was Cage and Phoenix against Penta and uh, and, and Guevara, um, and then Phoenix ended up pinning Sammy, mm-hmm. so it went to Cage and Phoenix, right? And then Cage won the title. The it was awesome. The whole thing, I mean, it's like eight, four, two. I mean, it's like the whole thing blows my mind. It was a pyramid scheme. It was a pyramid scheme. <laughs> It was so cool. I loved it. And then you got a badass shot of, pa- of Cage with that belt. <laughs> Holding both belts well, with the exhibition yeah, the title, title as well. I do love that uh, everybody brought their belts out. They they honored them as champions in other companies. Yeah. I think that's cool. I love that. Danny is 100% against that. He hates it. I don't know why. He, I think He likes AEW to be its own standalone and I, I, I understand. I just feel like... Why not rub as much as you can from other places? I understand back when Impact was kind of embarrassing. But it's like now people like it. But better. now Impact is, is so much better. Like, if we're talking like last couple of years of Dixie Carter era and like the TNA when days. Billy, we, we can like when separate Billy was now. running yeah. it and yeah. then when Jeff tried to make it GFW, like, yeah, that shit sucked. I'm but, gonna consider. I'm gonna consider the Anthem takeover as Impact, even though they were calling it Impact before. I'm gonna call that Impact, and then anything prior is just TNA. It's TNA, because yeah. Anthem to me, Anthem is Impact. Even the GFW. Jeez, I was months. I was there, man. I was there when I, they they put the banner up, man. I was that, like, what the hell? That, that horrible, that horrible owl Impact <laughs> logo, that baby blue one. I don't know, man. That was so bad. I was... I remember you You sent it to me, I think. Yeah, I sent it to you. I go, what the fuck is this You're shit? You're like, what is happening here? And I'm like, what? I'm like, no, dude, this has to be a joke. I didn't believe it. Yeah, you thought You thought I like made it up or something because I was like, dude, no, I'm not going to send you something that's fake. Wow. That was terrible. I, I was Thank shocked. Thank God that logo was short-lived. That was the, t- the tape I didn't make because I went, I went that year and I, like, I left on the last day of that taping... And that's the one tape I didn't see. And you sent it to me. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Uh, so. Anyway. Uh, that was a good um, way to cap off the weekend. Great show, though, man. Warrior, what a fun time. Great show. Drew, they drew 950 people. That's so awesome. Good for them. I like when good people win. He's a good yes. person. So Steve and his team are Steve, great. Steve, it's awesome. Me and you will uh, have to grab some uh, burgers and beers again. Me Get me in on that too. I want to talk to Steve as well. He wanted me to. He wanted me to like uh, break it down with him as well. So let's all do it together. Yeah. I. I. Anytime I get to work with Steve. Does he I'm, live out there? Is he far out? Uh, I imagine he's close to the school. I think he's somewhere. He's somewhere in the burbs. All right. But yeah, he's cool. Anytime I. Anytime I can work with Steve. Yeah. I'm gonna work with Steve. That's a. That's a guaranteed yes for me. Yeah. I got. I want to definitely. I want to definitely get close with Steve. He, he took project. care of me really well. Like, dude, between the merch. The food, yeah, my pay. I, I, I was happy. I ate fifty bucks worth of food, man. <laughs> I completely broke down. I had I had like three subs. Uh, I didn't eat any pizza because I was kind of pizzaed out. Mm. Um, but I had a shit ton of chicken. I had two burgers. I had cake. Two burger. Oh man, the burger. I had, 
It's so good. The burger with just cheese on it was incredible. It was amazing. I was like, oh, where, where's the ketchup? I'm like, ah, fuck. I couldn't find it. Unreal. Uh, Heinz, where, Heinz, he doesn't mean that, guys. He oh, doesn't yeah. mean I, that. I work for Heinz. I just couldn't find the ketchup. No, there was no ketchup or mustard. There was no condiments. You didn't even need it, though. You didn't need it. It was so good. God, it was delicious. Best, best, best burger I've ever gotten from a high school. Unbelievable. Um, they must have like they must they must have like emeralds cooking for them back there or yeah. something. <laughs> so that wraps up that. But really quickly, we got AAW LaSalle this Saturday. Seize the day. Seize the day. And uh, we're gonna tag Joey Ryan on this because Joey Ryan wants to take a Burt Reynolds naked picture. And we have a couch at LaSalle. I'm gonna take a picture of Joey Ryan naked. Your photo could this could be it. This could be your big this break. Is, this is my big break. This I'm going to take a picture of just Joey Ryan. He's going to have... He's he's just going to have his jacket, I think, and his sunglasses, and a lollipop. Basically recreate the Burt Reynolds Playboy photo that yes. he did. Uh, who, by the way, passed away today. Rest in peace. Rest this in peace, Amazing act. I'm a big Burt Reynolds fan. Um, so, can we just quickly tell a joke about the hashtags? So, like... Whenever we do a show hashtag, we try to you know make it like A W and then like the first word of I the title. I thought we talked about. Did we talk? We about talked that? about. We talked about STDs. Yeah, it would have been seize the day. A W S T D. It would have been STD. Which I'm, let's go rogue and let's just do it. <laughs> we could, guys, it's 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 hashtag seize. Oh my god, hashtag seize S T I Z. If you watch the show, reply, or if you listen to the show, wow, I'm tired. Guys. You are sweating so much right now. I'm so tired. <laughs> It's hot in here. Um, if you guys listen to the show, reply to the Twitter post with AWSTD. Just okay. How about just for us? You can use that hashtag, but for the show itself, for the show itself, you sees. Uh, I won't be in LaSalle though. I'm not gonna make the show because we changed dates. We changed dates last minute. I was set. Actually, I look back at it though. I wouldn't have made the original date either. I have to go to a wedding that day. Oh man! <laughs> I would. Double, I'm out. like hey, LaSalle booking, for me is out. Double booking. I, yeah, I'm out. LaSalle, I'm out. Um, but you guys have to run that one for me, uh, run my part, but, uh, I'm back for the tournament, end of the month, 28th and 29th. There you go. The, the participants have been released. I'll have the posters up on, the posters are up on social media, I'll have them on Instagram though. Yeah, They're we'll up. go down, we'll, we'll, we got, after next week, we'll, uh. Next week's gonna be interesting, cause you're gonna have to decompress that show, or debrief that show, without my perspective. Oh man. So I'm gonna have to. Yeah, yeah, it'd be cool. It'll it'd be, be cool. Full dis- just discussion point. We'll do. Yeah, we'll do. We'll we'll do that, and then uh, then the week after, uh, we'll have the breakdown for the for the Jim Lynham tournament. Yes. Yeah, we'll do a preview of that. Yes. And then in oh, but we have to get with uh, two we're heels getting, in a face. We're getting with two heel. We're getting with Charlie and Chris for that one. We got to jump in. Yeah, we got to schedule that up with those yeah, guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll figure out what to do because they they do normal hours. They're not like us. Yeah, we're we're recording this over the course of like shut mid- up. We're not doing this over two days. Blah blah. blah. Midnight has passed during oh the recording. Oh my god! This. What the hell's wrong with that though? I want oh, people to know how committed we are. Eh, whatever. What? I think it's, you're just tired. That's all. It's just being crabby. I'm Basil's very, crabby. I'm hella crabby. Right hashtag now. crabby. Hashtag. I got, I got. I got work in. I got. I got work in like seven hours. So do I. It's a big deal. I work corporate. Mine's. Mu- you sit down in a chair. Leave me alone. I know my hands don't get dirty. Yeah. I, come on. I'm on my feet all day. You see? You think I? You think I get these hands? Dirty? I'm on my feet all day. Yeah, that's nice. So all right, that's it. And that's about it, right? We're done. This episode's thick. What are we coming at? One twenty. Should we? One thirty. One thirty? Oh no, we're at one twenty four. Should we just talk no. for six minutes to round it out to Please an hour? Please God, now? no! Come on, what can I don't. We, we, no, let's talk about. I'm turning this off. Let's talk about each other. No, come on! I don't want to talk about it. We can get to know each other more on the. I'm air. turning it off and. Wait, wait, wait plugs, get... plugs, plugs, plugs. You can't, you can't forget the plugs. Okay, fine. Right. We'll do right. plugs and then that. And then plugs then... will be it. I promise. Plugs and upcoming <laughs> events. <laughs> Sorry, Colt. <laughs> All right. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Twitter at the BSB Show, and also on Facebook at the BSB Show. And also, we, do we ever register on Instagram? No. Okay, not yet. No. Uh, you can email us at uh, backstage boys backsta- pod backstage boys pod at gmail dot com. Right. We are available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, uh, now on and on TuneIn Radio. 
And, and just hopefully soon Google Play. That's soon we'll be Google Play. We're trying to get everywhere. And we're, I mean, this is we got some good reach going on here. Um, but check us out on all those. Subscribe. Rate, review, subscribe. Let us know what you think. Yep. Share with a friend. Tell everybody. Now, do you want to get to know each other a little more? Do you want to continue no. to take over where we got it? And hey. good night. <laughs>